Ready, Mr. Foley? Justin, honey, you were my very first kiss, my very first hand to hold. But you were nothing more than an average guy. And I don't say that to be mean. I don't. There was just something about you that made me need to be your girlfriend. To this day, I don't exactly know what that was. But it was there, and it was amazingly strong. You don't know this, but two years ago, when I was a freshman and you were a sophomore, I used to follow you around. For sixth period, I worked in the attendance office, so I knew every one of your classes. I even photocopied your schedule, which I'm sure I still have here somewhere. And when they go through my belongings, they'll probably toss it away thinking a freshman crush has no relevance. But does it? For me, yes it does. I went back as far as you to find an introduction to my story, and this is where it begins. When you reach the end of these tapes, Justin, I hope you'll understand your role in all of this, because it may seem like a small role now, but it matters. In the end, everything matters. Betrayal. It's one of the worst feelings. I know you didn't mean to let me down. In fact, most of you listening probably had no idea what you were doing, what you were truly doing. Anyways, we didn't share any classes. But our classrooms for periods 1, 4, and 5 were at least close to each other. Okay, so period 5 was a stretch, and sometimes it wouldn't get there until after you'd left, but periods 1 and 4 were at least in the same hall. After a while, I managed to say hello, and a little while later, you managed to say it back. Then, one day, I walked by you without saying a word. I knew you couldn't handle that, and it led to our very first multi-word conversation. Hey, you said, aren't you going to say hello? I smiled, took a deep breath, then turned around. Why should I? Because you always say hello. I asked why you thought you were such an expert on me. I said you probably didn't even know anything about me. Earlier, when I asked my mom how to get a boy's attention, she said, play hard to get. So that's what I was doing. And sure enough, it worked. You started hanging around my classes waiting for me. It seemed like weeks went by before you finally asked for my number, but I knew you eventually would, so I practiced saying it out loud. Real calm and confident like I didn't really care, like I gave it out a hundred times a day. Yes, boys at my old school had asked for my number, but here, at my new school, you were the first. No, that's not true, but you were the first to actually get my number. It's not that I didn't want to give it out before, I was just cautious. New town, new school, and this time, I was going to be in control of how people saw me. After all, how often do we get a second chance? Before you, Justin, whenever anyone asked, I'd say all the right numbers up until the very last one, and then I'd get scared and mess up, sort of accidentally on purpose. I was getting way too excited watching you write down my number. Luckily, you were way too nervous to notice. When I finally spat out that last number, the correct number, I smiled so big. Meanwhile, your hand was shaking so badly that I thought you were going to screw it up, and I was not going to let that happen. I pointed at the number you were writing. That should be a seven, I said. It is a seven. Oh, well, as long as you know it's a seven. I do, you said, but you scratched it out anyway and made an even shakier seven. I stretched the cuff of my sleeve into my palm and almost reached over to wipe the sweat from your forehead. Something my mom would have done. But thankfully, I didn't do that. <laughs> you never would have asked another girl for her number again. By the time I got home, you'd already called. Twice. My mom asked who you were and I said we had a class together. You were probably just calling with a homework question. And she said that's exactly what you had told her. I couldn't believe it, Justin. You lied to my mom. So why did that make me so happy? Because our lives matched. It was a sign. My mom asked what class we had and I said math, which wasn't a total lie. We both had math, just not together. And not the same type. Good, mom said. That's what he told me. I accused her of not trusting her own daughter, grabbed the slip of paper with your number from her hand, and ran upstairs. When you answered the phone, I said, Justin, it's Hannah. My mom said you called with a math problem. You were confused, but eventually you remembered lying to my mom, and, like a good boy, you apologized. So, Justin, what's the math problem? I asked. You weren't getting off that easy. 
and you didn't miss a beat. You told me train A was leaving your house at 3.45 p.m. Train B was leaving my house 10 minutes later. You couldn't see this, Justin, but I actually had my hand raised like I was in school rather than sitting on the edge of my bed. Pick me, Mr. Foley, pick me, I said. I know the answer. When you called my name, yes, Miss Baker, I threw my mom's hard-to-get rule out the window. I told you the two trains met at Eisenhower Park at the bottom of the rocket slide. A long pause at your end of the line, Justin. And I mean a long pause. So when do the trains meet? You asked. Fifteen minutes, I said. You said fifteen minutes seemed awfully slow for two trains going full speed. I know what you're all thinking. Hannah Baker is a slut. Oops, did you catch that? I said Hannah Baker is. Can't say that anymore. Wrong. Hannah Baker is not and never was a slut. Which begs the question, what have you heard? I simply wanted a kiss. I was a freshman girl who had never been kissed. Never. But I liked a boy. He liked me. And I was going to get that kiss. That's the story. The whole story. Right there. I told you to meet me there in 15 minutes. Of course, I only said that to make sure I got there before you. By the time you walked into the park, I wanted to be inside that rocket and all the way up. Just like in my dreams. And that's how it happened. From my viewpoint at the top of the rocket, I saw you come in at the far end of the park. You checked your watch every few steps and walked over to the slide, looking all around, but never up. So I spun the steering wheel as hard as I could to make it rattle. You took a step back, looked up, and called my name. But don't worry, even though I wanted to live out my dream, I didn't expect you to know every single line. Be right down, I said. But you told me to stop. You'd climb up to where I was. So I shouted back, No, let me take the slide. Then you repeated those magical, dreamlike words, I'll catch you. I couldn't help smiling as I climbed down the top ladder. I sat myself on the slide, my heart racing. This was it. All my friends back home had their first kisses in middle school. Mine was waiting for me at the bottom of a slide, exactly as I wanted it. All I had to do was push off, and I did. I know it didn't really happen like this, but when I look back, it all happens in slow motion. The push. The slide, my hair flying behind me, you raising your arms to catch me, me raising mine so you could. So when did you decide to kiss me, Justin? Was it during your walk to the park, or did it simply happen when I slid into your arms? Okay, who out there wants to know my very first thought during my very first kiss? Here it is. Somebody's been eating chili dogs. (laughs) I'm sorry, it wasn't that bad, but it was the first thing I thought. I was so anxious about what kind of kiss it would be, because my friends back home described so many types, and it turned out to be the beautiful kind. You didn't shove your tongue down my throat, you didn't grab my butt, we just held our lips together and kissed. And that's it. Wait, stop, don't rewind, there's no need to go back because you didn't miss a thing. Let me repeat myself, that is all that happened. Why? Did you hear something else? Well, you're right. Something did happen. Justin grabbed my hand, we walked over to the swings, and we swung. Then he kissed me again the very same way. Then, and then, Hannah, what happened then? Then, we left. He went one way, I went the other. Oh, so sorry. You wanted something sexier, didn't you? You wanted to hear how my itchy little fingers started playing with his zipper. You wanted to hear. Well, what did you want to hear? Because I've heard so many stories that I don't know which one is the most popular. But I do know which one is the least popular. The truth. Now, the truth is one you won't forget. So thank you, Justin. Sincerely. My very first kiss was wonderful. And for the month or so that we lasted, and everywhere that we went, the kisses were wonderful. You were wonderful. But then you started bragging. A week went by and I heard nothing. But eventually, as they always will, the rumors reached me. And everyone knows you can't disprove a rumor. I know. I know what you're thinking. As I was telling the story, I was thinking the same thing myself. A kiss? A rumor based on a kiss made you do this to yourself? No. A rumor based on a kiss ruined a memory that I hoped would be special. A rumor based on a kiss started a reputation that other people believed in and reacted to. 
And sometimes, a rumor based on a kiss has a snowball effect. A rumor based on a kiss is just the beginning. Turn the tape over for more. And Justin, honey, stick around. You're not going to believe where your name pops up next.